Today I want to address the model minority myth and how dangerous it is. I would get to the point where I feel like it's necessary to make a YouTube video about it. First and foremost, I just want to say that racism in the Asian community towards other races who are not white are very prominent. A model minority is a demographic group whose members are perceived to achieve a higher degree of social economic success than the rest of the average population. We are constantly pressured to become doctors and lawyers and these high achieving and respectable careers in society. Not, I am not bashing our grandparents and parents for this. They want the best for us and I understand that. If your grandparents or your parents don't perceive an individual based on the color of their skin, then you are a lucky few. Popular cultures and the media and TV had portrayed black people in such a negative light. So negative that enabled our older generation to think that it's okay to teach us things like cross the streets when you see a black man or to not make close contact or to hold on to our purses and it's really upsetting that such things are still being told by parents to Asian kids every day. When I was in secondary school, so about 13 to 16, I always tried to portray this persona where I would just go along with these borderline racist jokes. Now that I think about them, they're, they're not even borderline, they're straight up racist. So imagine I just met somebody in five minutes and they were like, I hope you eat my dogs. You know, back in the day, I didn't think much of them because I thought that being salty isn't cool. Like, standing up for yourself isn't cool. And telling somebody that you're uncomfortable with what they're saying isn't cool. I know a lot of people feel like this as well, so it's not just me. Ugh, yes, I am very good at maths. With that, I want to say that racism goes both ways. We are more subtle in our ways of racism that sometimes we don't even realize it. Whereas other people might be more in our faces and say remarks to us that are definitely racist. We are like the bullied kids who refused to stand up to other bullied kids because the bullies promised us that they would pick on us less if we sit in the corner quietly and not say a word. White supremacists pat us on the back and say, You're doing so good, sweetie. And we take it with a smile because it's always easier to be a bystander than to be the oppressed. They know that if we are united, with the other people of color. If we are united with black people, if we are united with Hispanic and Latino, Middle Eastern people, then their racial hierarchical society would just crumble, it would just... Now to the matter at hand. Those of us who are standing up and standing behind black people in support of Black Lives Matter movement. We are not begging for either approval from black or white people. Which really just kind of like hurt my brain the more I think about it because it's just sort of like, what the fuck are you thinking? Asians are throwing themselves under the bus by denying the systematic separation. 
if we stand behind Black Lives Matter because they own us something or we own them something, then that's not justice. That's a transaction. You, you might as well pay pay each other some of that hate. I believe that we should do what's right, not what's convenient. don't believe that black people are the most oppressed in society or you don't believe in violence if you're a pacifist and you don't believe in looting and burning down buildings which I agree I don't believe in looting or burning down buildings but controversially I also believe that sometimes extremes are just necessary to achieve the end goal don't believe in any of those things the least you can do is believe in the right to life I guess you, how do you live with that belief how do you live with no sense of morality okay I'm just gonna stop speaking now because I feel like I'm just gonna get like so cancelled for this video we are all obligated to support Black Lives Matter is basic humans decency that nobody should be killed for no reason this is dated by like back in Jesus day or something I don't know but it's, it's, it's very long it's like it's a long standing tradition of not killing people for fun. Now, especially with the recent coronavirus breakout going on, we understand what it's like to be discriminated against and to be profiled. So now you want to treat a whole race as you've been treated? Why would you say that black people didn't fight for us with the coronavirus? Are you sure? Have you talked to all black people? I don't want to invalidate anybody's experiences. I think they're all valid, your struggles are valid and they are real. And I'm sorry that they have been negative and I'm sorry that such treatment happened to you. But please, please, please don't put the actions of individuals upon an entire race. Individuals do not represent race or ethnicities or occupations. The people who see color, the races, they see all sorts of color. They see spectrums of the rainbows. So I promise you, they see that we are colored. I can't believe I have to say this. I can't believe I have to like sit here and say that we're not white people. Pitting people of color against people of color is an old and ingrained agenda that needs to be challenged because as much as we are led to believe, oh my god, the sun, we are not superior. We, we're not. We're scapegoat as the model minority that white supremacists wants every person of color to be like. <sighs> Subservient and assimilated, easier to control. We want our own to be successful, of course, but we don't want to be that. There you go. Now here's an example of a race that's successful. You know, be more like them and you'll be accepted into our society. The white supremacists are so smart. They must have been like, why would I bother to oppress both races? Why don't I just like subtly oppress one race and openly oppress the other race? So that subtly oppressed race will help me subtly oppressed the openly oppressed race you yeah.
Oh! No, I gotta give credits where credit's due, man. They're evil, evil, but they smart, smart. I know I will get in as some sort of comments that oh my gosh she hates white people like look she's trash talking about them she's like oh Asian and black people and people of color are better than white people like no that's not what I'm saying white people are potential allies white people are not the enemies white supremacy and the people who endorses the ideology are the enemies. Okay, I don't, I don't even hate white as a race. I think they've contributed. Um, something, they've contributed something. Let me not speak anymore. For those of you who haven't shown your support or posted about um, Black Lives Matter, you should. But please don't post because you feel pressure to, because it's not an Instagram trend to hop on and hop off and forget about this as soon as it's no longer trending. Educate yourself on the detrimental effect that white supremacists and years of colonizations and how it affects our cultures and our communities. Then post and really mean what you post. We are trying to inspire younger generations to take a stand against injustices. We can't do that if the inspiration comes from fear of being alienated. Inspiration, <laughs> inspiration has to come from the fact that you want to make a change. I hope you guys are all going to protest. Even though I know the coronavirus is still going on, like we want to like believe that it's gone, <laughs> but it's still going on. So please take every precaution possible for your health and your safety and the safety of your family. Also, I put the links in the description box of how you can donate to honour the memory of George Floyd and um, sign the petition to get justice for his murder. Thank you for watching. If you watch until the end, you're brilliant and I love you.